Hi, I'm Lorelei Siemens, and we're back to doing our Bible study, and we are on Daniel chapter 4 now. So if you are just starting, you want to go back and watch the other chapters, and you'll know what we're talking about. Uh, so we're in Daniel chapter 4, and this is a really, really cool chapter because Daniel chapter 4 is actually written by Nebuchadnezzar. So if you remember a little bit about Nebuchadnezzar from the other chapters, he's a little bit crazy. He has a little bit of some eccentric stuff. Definitely has some anger issues. Um, all of that kind of comes about here in Daniel chapter 4. So remember in Daniel chapter 3, it ends with um, the king uh, sees that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were saved from the fire. And so he wants to serve their God. And so he passes this law that you have to obey uh, their God. You can't say anything bad about their God or else um, your house is destroyed and everything bad happens to you. Okay. So now we are here. And King Nebuchadnezzar has another dream. So remember his first dream that he had was a big statue uh, that had the gold head, um, the silver, then the bronze, then the iron, and the iron mixed with clay, which was our countries, Babylon, Medes and Persians, Greece, um, Rome, and then um, the Roman Empire mixed like the Europe and the UN, kind of what we're doing right now. Okay, so he has another dream, and this time, as he has this dream, um, he sees this amazingly huge tree. So it's huge, it's beautiful, and all the animals from all around come under this tree for shade, and it's just like the most amazing tree. Then the tree gets cut down, and it's nothing but a stump. So he has this dream, and then it kind of freaks him out a little bit, so he calls Daniel to come and help him uh, to find out what the dream was about. So we see this down, um, he talks about his dream at the beginning, and then around verse 19 is when Daniel comes in to explain to him what the dream means. And so Daniel says, you King Nebuchadnezzar, um, uh, you King Nebuchadnezzar, uh, you are the tree. So you're the great tree that's gonna get chopped down. So right now you're great, and remember, at this point, Nebuchadnezzar and Babylon, they were rulers of the whole world at the time. They were the most dominant country, and then King Nebuchadnezzar was in charge of that country. And so um, pretty much anyone who wanted anything in the entire world, King Nebuchadnezzar was the most powerful man of the world at that time. So what Daniel says to him is, um, if you become prideful and if you start thinking that this is you and that it's not that God gave this to you, then it's going to get taken away from you. And so King Nebuchadnezzar, he really responds to this dream and responds to what Daniel has said. So he says he is going to um, put God first and he's not going to become prideful. So then exactly one year after this dream, he is standing um, up in his castle and he is looking out at Babylon. And remember when I said in chapter two, how Babylon was most beautiful and how the countries get stronger, but they get less beautiful. Babylon was amazing. Like it was amazing. There was um, beautiful gardens and fountains and the architecture was unbelievable. Like it was the most beautiful place to live. So he was looking out at this amazing place where he lived and he said, look at what I have built. And at that exact moment when he said that, look at what I have built. Because remember, God said, if you think that this is from you and that it's not from God, then I will take it away from you. So he said, look what I have built. Just like that, it, his mind was gone and he lost his mind. And he thought that he was a wild animal. So he starts acting like a wild animal. So imagine that you're in the castle at that time and he's just like running around like a wild animal. Um, barking maybe, clawing at people. And so they actually have to take him out of the city and put him out in the wilderness because he's just not safe. So he ends up out there in this wilderness. And so he is out there um, running around like a wild animal. So, his mo so Nebuchadnezzar's mind is completely gone. And when his mind comes back to him, he has been living out in this will out in the middle of the woods basically and it says here um in verse 33 that he ate grass like an oxen um his body was wet with the dews of heaven his hair had grown like eagle's feathers and his nails were like bird claws so you're the greatest king and the the leader of the biggest country the most important country in the world 
and you're looking out at how amazing your kingdom was and then in an instant, in his mind it would have been like an instant, he is in the middle of the woods, um, he's wet, he's eating grass and his hair is like eagle's feathers and his claw, his nails are like claws because he hasn't done anything with himself in all this time. And at that moment, it says here, uh, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted my eyes to heaven and my understanding returned to me and I blessed the Most High and praised and honored him who lives forever. So his mind comes back to him and what is the first thing that he does when his mind comes back to him? He worships God and he praises him. So then he has to go back to the castle. So imagine that you're showing up, hi, my mind is back again. Um, I'd like to be the ruler again. He's been gone for a while, so obviously his, the people um, who worked for him had been taking over. I don't know, it's not really the easiest thing to take power back from men once they've had it. So he would have had to come in and say that he was in charge again. That wouldn't have been the easiest thing. Plus, how humbling that would have been to come back looking like how he looked and having to say, yeah, my mind is back, sorry, I was a little bit crazy there for a while. So he comes back and then what does he do? He writes a letter and sends the letter out to every single person living in Babylon. And the letter is Daniel chapter four. So when you read through this letter, there are so many amazing things written about God. You wanna talk about a part of the Bible that explains who God is and the worship of God, the amazing worship of God, the things said about God in Daniel chapter four is amazing. I mean, to me, it's equal with the Psalms uh, with many of the Psalms for the things they talk about God and how amazing God is. And it was written by King Nebuchadnezzar. So I absolutely love this book. I love it because it reminds us not to be prideful. Um, it reminds us of who God is. And it reminds us that when we for ask for forgiveness and we come back to God, that he will restore us. And that's really amazing. So that is Daniel chapter four. Go back and read it. And once again, take your highlighter and highlight the things in Daniel chapter four that are worshiping God. So things that remind you to worship God. And then go back, maybe write just those sentences on a cue card and take it without you throughout the day. And make this a day when you really worship God. And just uh, remember all of the things that he's done for you. I'm Laura Lee Siemens, this is the Bible Study, and we just finished Daniel chapter four.